This is the third video where I show you how we can store a bunch of on off values, true, false, yes, no, either user flags or user settings, how we can store all of that without creating a new column for each one, which gets to be super annoying. You may think you've jumped ahead of the class and say, I, I know it, we're just gonna do a join. We're just gonna do select star from users. What are we gonna do? Enter, join, user. We're not gonna do any of that. In the first video, we took all that information and we compressed it into a single integer and then used bit masks on it. Very, very interesting. I would watch the video. I don't know if I would use the technique. In the second video, we looked at storing it all in a JSON column, whether that's a JSON object or a JSON array. That's probably my favorite. In this video, we're gonna look at separating that stuff out into different tables and using many, many relationships to link them together. As a reminder, in each video, we're gonna cover finding users with and without a flags, finding a flag not used, adding a new flag, removing a flag, indexing, selecting with the flags, and the pros and cons to each approach. I'm gonna need some help from Steve, the editor, to show you this table structure. We have been dealing with a users table and adding a single column to it, whether that's an integer or a JSON column. Now, instead, we're gonna keep the users table, but also add a flags table that contains all of the available flags. There aren't that many, but we'll put all of the flags over there. And then in between the two, we're gonna have a linking table that's just gonna contain the user ID and the flag ID. And that's how we will apply a flag to a user. Let me show you some of the data from these tables. If we do select star from users limit 10, you'll see a pretty normal looking users table. No flags, no settings, nothing, just the users table. The flags live in their own table. If we say select star from flags, we'll see here are the eight flags. And at this point, I've just given them a name and some timestamps. You could add more information to this table, which is one of the benefits of this method is you could add a description. You could add um, some auditing, you could add if it's enabled or not in, in your particular admin UI. You can add all sorts of attributes to this table, which makes it kind of nice. The way that these two tables are linked together is if we do select star from user flags, I need to limit that down, I think there are a lot. If we do select star from there, you'll see that we have a user ID and a flag ID. So anytime a user is given a new flag, a row is inserted into this table and that's how the linking is created. Let's do show indexes from that table because there's something interesting there I want to show you. At least I think it's interesting. I think all of this is interesting. There is a unique index over the combination of user ID and flag ID. So not, not separately, but as, as a combined unit, you can only insert a user ID flag ID combo once. And the reason that we do this is it's an on off, it's a Boolean thing. I don't need a flag to be applied to a user five times. I just want the flag to be applied once. And so adding a unique constraint over the combination of those columns ensures at the database level that I'm not gonna apply a flag more than one time. Before we get into applying a flag, let's start with how do we find users with and without a flag. We're gonna look for users that have the flag dark mode. There's two ways to get this flag ID. One would be select star from flags where, where name equals dark mode. That, I mean, that's obvious, right? We can just do select ID. More likely in the real world situation, you already have this ID. You already have this ID in your application. You don't need to go to the database to look it up by name. You probably already have that in the application. So this doesn't move me very much. What I'm looking for is select star from users where what? We're gonna say where exists. We're gonna open this and we're gonna say select star from user flags where flag ID equals one, and remember you probably are feeding that in from your application, and user ID equals users.id. So what we're doing is we're creating a subquery and we're linking the inner query, the subquery, to the outer query using this exists statement. And then we say user ID on the inner query and the users.id on the outer query. That's how these things should be related. And if we run this, you'll see that's all the users with the flag on. And to get the opposite, we can just throw a not on there where not exists. And those are the users that have that flag off where it's not present. And the reason that we don't do a join here is a little bit in depth, but I'll give you a high level overview. I have a full video on subqueries versus joins, but in the situation where you're filtering table A by data in table B, but you don't need the information in table B, then you can use a subquery. And under the hood, MySQL is going to turn that into a semi-join or an anti-join. So it does have its own optimization to make this query a lot faster. But what this prevents us from doing is joining in a bunch of data and getting that explosion of the user 
users based on their number of flags and then filtering down to the distinct rows and then getting rid of the flag data. We just don't need to do any of that. We're filtering users based on a related table so we can use a subquery. If we do select star from user flags where user ID equals one and we take a look at that, the only flag that user number one has is flag number five. To apply a new flag or turn on a new setting, it's very easy, insert into user flags. And then we say the user ID and the flag ID values of one, and we'll just make one up of six. Very, very normal, not very interesting stuff, right? But if we try to insert it again, that's where we run into an issue because we have created that unique composite key over the user ID and the flag ID. And so you'd have to check, does the user already have the flag? I don't wanna do that. Too old to be doing that. So if we do insert ignore, if we can spell it, insert ignore into user flags, we're back on a happy path. We can just add it, but here's a problem. If we do insert ignore and your application uh, freaks out and passes the wrong thing and you insert null, it just works. It just works and it really, it shouldn't work, but ignore is eating that error. So if we remove the ignore, you see, oh, that's an error that I care about. I wish I had not done insert ignore. In fact, you don't have to do insert ignore. So if we do values one of seven on duplicate key update. So when there is a duplicate key, we're just gonna update and we're basically gonna do a, a no op. We're just gonna say set user ID equal to user ID. That's kind of it. So the first one will insert and then the next one, it just continues to work and we don't get that bad data in. So now if we read this back, we see that our bad one was coalesced down to a zero and then here are the good ones and we can just continue. We can just continue to run this and it'll just work and we're not eating errors that we shouldn't otherwise, that we should otherwise be paying attention to. When working with this style, this many to many relationships, adding and removing flags is just inserting and deleting rows. With bitmasks, we had to do some complicated stuff. With the JSON, we had to do a little bit of complicated stuff with this. We're just adding and removing rows. So if we wanna remove a flag, we can just delete from user flags where user ID equals one and flag ID equals seven. That's all we have to do and then it's gone. So we can select star from user flags where user ID equals one and there you go, the seven flag is gone. Let's just get rid of that zero flag too because I don't like that there. So that's, that's how you remove a flag. It's also really nice that you can remove a flag from everybody all at once. And so instead of saying where user ID equals one and flag ID equals zero, we can just say flag ID equals, let's just get rid of flag six for everyone. Maybe we're deciding this is the default now, everybody is opted in, we actually don't need the flag, let's just get rid of it and it's gone. And it's super fast, which we'll talk about in the indexing section. But now that that flag is gone, we might wanna look at the flags table and see, are there any flags that aren't applied to anyone? Are there any settings that aren't being used by anyone? And we can do that again with a subquery. So we can do select star from flags where exists, and we'll change that to a not exists, and then say select uh, flag, select, uh, select star from user flags where flags, dot ID equals flag ID. And if we run that, we see that there are two flags that are not being used by anybody. And so this might be a good time to just remove those out of the database. When it comes to indexing these tables, it's pretty straightforward. The user table, you should have your primary key index. The flag table, you should have your primary key index. But let's talk about that linking table in the middle. We did put that unique key over the user ID and the flag ID. And that not only enforces uniqueness, but it does help with lookups. But I've also added a second key to the flag ID. Let me show you that. So if we do show indexes, from user flags and we run that. This is the unique key that not only enforces uniqueness but helps anytime we need to look something up by user ID because this key is user ID flag ID. So anytime we do a query that includes user ID, it can use the first part of this composite key. And if we do a user ID flag ID combo, it's gonna use both parts of that. But if we just do one that is on flag ID alone, so like we just did, if we do select star from user flags where flag ID equals seven or something like that, if we didn't have this other key, which is on flag ID alone, if we didn't have this key, we wouldn't be able to use 
this index at all. And so we would be totally hosed. We wouldn't be able to use an index here no matter what. So I've added a flag ID key so that these types of queries that look up flag ID alone are very, very fast. I think the last thing I owe you is bringing all of the flags along with the user. So selecting the flags and the users at the same time, as always, there are a couple different ways to do it. And as always, I'm not gonna tell you which one's right. I'm gonna show you a few examples and explain when one might be right and then I'll let you decide. Let's start with the most obvious way. We'll do select star from users where users ID is less than 10. That's a good amount. And we'll left join the user flags in on user flags dot user ID equals users dot ID. And we can copy this down. And then to get the flag name, we're gonna join the flags in on user flags flag ID equals flags ID. That's gonna be a lot of data, so let's limit that down to users ID. We'll do users name too, just so it looks pretty, and flags.name. So if we run that, we see we do get all of the users back and we get a couple of duplicates because we one user has multiple flags. And this is, this is one of the things that you'll have to deal with. We did do a left join, so we are getting users back that don't have flags, which in this case, this is what this is what I want. I want all of the users, even if they don't have flags. Um, if you want to compress these, these three rows into one row, that is possible. So let me show you another slightly different way that you can do that. You can say group concat on the flags.name, and then we'll come down here and we'll group by the users.id, and because we're selecting it, we'll group by the users.name as well. And so if you run that, you'll see that this flattens out into a comma separated list, which may or may not be useful. I don't know what you're using it for. If you bring this into the application and then split it out into an array, Maybe that's useful, maybe that's easier than deduping the, the users that come back. Maybe your ORM handles the deduping. I don't know what you're using it for. You do need to be aware that this group concat I think has a default max length of 1024 characters. So if you're gonna compress 500 rows in here, it's either going to error out or silently truncate. I don't think it silently truncates anymore, but either way, you're gonna wanna be sure that um, if you're grouping a huge amount of data that you up that setting, that setting is configurable. Um, so if you think you're gonna hit more than 1024, make sure you change that. Let's look at another way to get all of the flags back. And this is a really common way this is a really common way that ORMs do it. Instead of selecting it all and joining it in like that, because you do get that duplication of users, instead of doing that, what, what most or many ORMs will do is they have this concept of eager loading your relationships. And so it'll run a query like this. It'll say select star from users, and let's say you have limited it down somehow where ID is less than 10, right? And so the ORM is gonna grab that, it's gonna pull it back, and then what it's going to do is it's going to look at these rows that were returned, and if you requested that the flags be eager loaded, it's gonna turn around and issue another flat or another query like this. It's gonna say, select star from uh, user flags where where user ID in, and then it's gonna pass through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In this case, it's gonna pass through all of the IDs from the query that it got earlier. And depending on what you tell your ORM, it may go ahead and join in the flags on user flags dot flag ID equals flags dot ID. And maybe it just pulls back the flag ID and the flags the flags.name. So in this case, this might be what the ORM issues. It'll probably issue user ID so that it knows how to link them together. And then inside your application code, it's gonna link them up. That's how the ORM is likely gonna do it. And that's probably gonna be transparent to you. And don't be afraid of that double query thing being issued. It can be really performant to take a query and decompose it into two separate queries. Um, and eager loading like this is a pretty common standard. If you're writing raw SQL and you need to generate a single reportable output, I would use the left join with the group concat. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this method. This, the pro is it's super normal. This is a very normal way to do it. This is a traditional way to do it. Most people understand this method. Bitmasks, nobody will get it. JSON, uh, a lot of people will understand it, but it's less normal than this. And honestly, choosing something right down the middle is usually, it's usually, it's usually a pretty good idea. 
Um, it's not the bleeding edge, but it's very, very safe. Most ORM layers are gonna totally understand this and have that eager loading support and everything built in. If you aren't using an ORM, you should be. If you aren't using an ORM, um, it, it is a little bit more complicated to pull the flags along with it because you have to do the join, you may get those duplicate users or do the group concat. I don't, that doesn't, that doesn't super move me. You can figure that out pretty easily. One of the really great things about this method is the flags can have additional data. In all of the other methods, the flags are simply on off keys, either in a bit mask or in a JSON object. Here, they're a full table. So you can add descriptions, you can add notes, you can um, add permissions of who can add a flag and you can store all of that in the flags table. And so that is one of the great benefits of this. Also that intermediate table, that linking table, that can hold additional data. So you can see when a flag was added or maybe you can say by whom the flag was added. And so that additional linking table can hold more data. So that is the end of the three ways to add flags or settings or Boolean values. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you haven't seen the other two videos, please do check those out. And please stick around for more videos and subscribe to this channel so that you make my boss, Holly, very happy. See ya.